Open your book to page 299. Let's start with number one. You have inverse cotangent of square root of three. So cotangent is cosine over sine, so all this problem you need to draw triangles. So what you do is make into fraction. So cotangent is cosine over sine, so this is cosine, this is sine. So that's your square root of three, that's cosine, and this is sine, and therefore this is two. So by looking at this triangle, you have to figure out the angle. Again, inverse function is an angle, so you have to figure out what angle is that. And then when it, it asks you to find a real number, that means is you have to use a radian. So this would be uh, 30 degrees, so it would be pi over 6. And so every time you, you go through the same process. So number 3, you have the arc uh, cosecant of 1. Now, if, you, if you're not familiar with the cosecant, what you do is use the primary function. So cosecant is the inverse of sine. So you can, so you can flip it over. So it's same as arc uh, sine of 1. Right? 1, when you flip it over, it's still 1. So when you draw your triangle, okay, so 1 is going to be over here. And therefore, the angle for this picture is going to be pi over 2. Let's go to number five. Yeah, inverse secant of square root of two. Again, if you're not familiar with the secant, then what you do is use your primary function. So secant came from cosine. So this is gonna be equal to uh, inverse cosine of one over square root of two. Right? For inverse function, you flip over the, the number. So when you draw your triangle, so cosine is, the cosine is the horizontal of a hypotenuse. So that's what you get, right? So again, that is the, the horizontal of a hypotenuse. And therefore, by looking at this picture, you should know that this is a 45 angle. Uh, so 45 would be pi over four. Okay. Let's go to number seven. Okay, number seven, you have the you have a sign of the inverse cotangent of zero. Okay, so you can put it over one. So first, let's deal with this part. So there are two parts. So let's deal with this part first. Okay. So cosine is, cotangent is cosine over sine. So cosine is zero. Cosine is zero, sine is one. So it's gonna be right over here. Okay. So you can inverse function. Inverse function is an angle. Okay, so from this, you can see that this is going to be pi over 2. So this becomes sine of pi over 2. Okay, so again, inverse function is the angle. So now you're looking for the sine of that. Okay, so pi over 2 is over here, so sine is going to be equal to 1. So again, when you do this, go step by step, going down and line things up. Okay, let's go to number 9. Number nine, you have tangent of cosecant inverse of five over four. Again, if you don't like the, the secondary function, if you can do it, that's fine. If you cannot, then what you do is go ahead and change that into the primary function. So cosecant came from sine. So inverse sine of four over five. Right? So again, you all you do is just flip the numbers over. So this is easy to do. So when you draw your picture, sine, Inverse sine of four over five, so that means this is a vertical of a hypotenuse, so it's gonna look like this. So it'd be four over five, and this would be a three. Okay, so again, so that's your angle theta, so that's your angle theta over here. So now, you're looking for tangent of that, that theta, so this is equal to tangent theta. Okay, so again, that is your theta. So looking for tangent, so tangent would be sine over cosine, so this is equal to four over three. Okay, let's go to number 11. Yeah, inverse cotangent of negative one. Okay. So it can put negative one over one. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So cosine is negative one over one, right? 
So in this case, the picture is going to be pi. Uh, uh, back up, back up. So it's cosine over sine. This is one. Thinking about cosine. So cosine is negative 1, and sine is 1. There you go. So I have that. Back up. So you have to be careful with your functions. Okay. So this this is cotangent. It's not not cosine. I, I, I was thinking the inverse cosine. So from here you can see that it's going to be a three pi over four. Okay. So that's your theta. Okay. okay. Let's go to thirteen. Uh, yeah, arc secant of negative 2. Again, if you don't like secant, secant came from cosine, so you can do the arc cosine of 1 over negative 2. I can change that, and again, you draw. So this is going to be... Now, with this one, you know the hypotenuse have to be positive, so the negative have to go with the 1. Okay? So you're going to get... Uh, negative 1, 2, so this would be square root of 3. So in this case, your theta is going to be equal to um, uh, 2 pi over 3. Right. So again, it's going to be 120 degrees. Okay, let's go to 15. You have arc cosecant of negative 2. So again, you can convert that into primary function. So cosecant came from sine. And so this flip it over, you got negative 1 over 2. So draw your picture. So sine is negative, so it's going to be down here. So it'd be negative 1 over 2. Right? Sine is negative 1 over 2 squared of 3. Now you have to watch the boundary, okay? Remember, in the inverse function, you cannot go this way, right? Because you cannot cross the quadrant 3, so you cannot go this way. So you have to go this way. So the answer would be negative pi over 6. Okay? So you cannot say you know, it's, it's 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 would be not correct. Because to get 11 pi over 6, you have to go this way. But you cannot cross the quadrant 3. So this would be not correct. So you have to watch the inverse function. Inverse function has a restriction. Okay, okay let's go to 17. You have cosecant inverse of one half. So again, I don't like the secondary function. I'm going to convert that. So cosecant came from sine, and this becomes two over one. And so when you draw your picture, sine is a vertical, so you're going to get two, and the hypotenuse is one. So you can see that's impossible because you have the lake. The vertical is longer than that, longer than the hypotenuse. So this is undefined. Let's go to 19. You have cosine of cosecant inverse of negative 5 over 3. Okay. So again, I'm going to convert cosecant into sine, into inverse sine, so you flip it over. So you draw your picture. So again, there are two parts, so you have to do this part first. So this one is going to be right over here. So it's negative 3 over 5, so this is 4. Okay, so that's your angle theta. Okay, so I'm put, I put theta over here, but actually theta is over here, so that's your theta. Okay, so this is equal to cosine theta, right? Again, inverse function is an angle. So you have to use that picture to see what is cosine. So cosine is 4 over 5. So this is equal to 4 over 5. Okay, let's go to 21. You have cotangent of inverse secant of negative 5 over 4. Again, I don't like the secondary function, so I'm going to convert that. Secant came from cosine, so it would be inverse cosine, and you have to flip it over. 
So draw your picture. So cosine is negative, so it's negative 4 over 5, and so it will be a 3. So, that's, so this is your angle theta. Okay? So this is equal to cotangent of theta. Right? Again, the inverse function is an angle. So look at this picture over here. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So this is equal to negative 4 over 3. Okay, cosine over sine. Okay. So again, when you're doing this kind of problem, you got to show all your work. Do it step by step. Okay, let's go to 23. You have cosine of inverse secant of negative 2. So again, look, I'm going to convert it into primary function. So secant came from cosine, and you flip it over, right? And from these, from this, you can see cosine and inverse cosine, they cancel out. So it ends will be negative 1 half. But let's say if you don't get that, that's OK. You're just going to work it through, right? So co inverse cosine of negative 1 over 2. Right? So it's negative 1 over 2. And so this will be square root of 3. So now, again, this becomes cosine of theta, right? Again, inverse function, inverse function is an angle. So look at this picture of here. Cosine of that angle is going to be equal to, cosine is horizontal over hypotenuse, so equal to negative 1 over 2, right? Negative 1 over 2. Okay, let's go to 25. Yeah, cotangent of inverse cotangent of 33.4. Again, notice you got cotangent, inverse cotangent, they should cancel. So the answer should be 33.4 right away. But if you don't get that, that's okay. You just go ahead and do the you know do the regular steps. Okay, so cotangent is cosine over sine. So it's gonna be like this. So it'd be 33.4 and this is one. Okay. Right. So cotangent is cosine over sine. And now you have to look at this picture over here. That's your cotangent theta, right? So cotangent theta, look at this picture. What's cotangent? Cotangent is cosine over sine, so you're going to get 33.4 over 1. So you're going to get 33.4. You can look at this picture for cotangent, right? So you can notice that the, the function and, and uh, its inverse is going to cancel out, right? And so you get that. But you have to watch some of the restriction, okay? Okay, let's go to 27. You have cosecant of inverse cosecant of negative 4. So again, you get the same situation. Secant and cosecant is going to cancel out. So the answer would be equal to negative 4. Okay? Or if you don't get that, what you do is you, you can do it the, the long way, okay? in case you don't remember that. So what you do is uh, convert the cosecant into sine. So draw your picture. So it's negative one, negative one, four, and okay. and now you do the cosecant. Cosecant of this picture. Cosecant is the the hypotenuse over over that, right? So this is equal to four over negative one. Right? Cosecant of that angle. So again, it's equal to negative four. Okay. So if you do it a long way, if you do it step by step, you get the same answer. Okay, let's go to number 39. Number 39, you got theta equal to arc secant of negative 2. Okay, so again, I'm going to convert that into C can come from cosine, and you flip it over, right? So then you draw your picture. Cosine is negative, so it'd be negative 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2, and that's your theta over here. So by looking at that, theta is going to equal to what? This is 120 degrees, so it's going to be equal to 2 pi. Uh, wait. This one, it says find exact degrees. Okay, notice number 1 through 27, it asks you for exact number, the real number. So when it, when it asks you for real number, it's talking about radian. Over here, when talking about degree, then you then use degree, right? So this is 120 degrees. So make sure you pay close attention to the instruction. 
Okay, pay attention to what I ask you to, to do. Okay, so number 41, you got theta equal to inverse cotangent of negative one. Okay, so you can draw your picture, make into a fraction. So cotangent is cosine over sine. So cosine is uh, negative one and sine is one. Okay, so this is square root of two. So again, this is gonna be, so it's theta equal to 135 degrees. Let's go to 43. You got theta equal to inverse cosecant of negative two over square root of three. Okay, so again, I'm gonna convert into primary function. Cosecant came from sine. Okay. And the reason I put negative on top because this is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always positive, right? So if you draw your picture, Inverse sine is, uh, is down here, so negative square root of 3 over 2, so this is 1, so it's going to be a negative 60 degrees. It will be negative 60 degrees. Again, you cannot go this way, okay? So if you put down 300 degrees, you would be wrong, because remember, inverse function, you cannot go through quadrant 3. So to get to here, there's no way to get through this way, because you cannot go through. So you have to go this way, so it's negative 60 degrees. If you put down 300 degrees, then you will be marked wrong, okay? So again, 300 degrees is not correct because that is not within the boundary. So you got to watch the boundary, watch the limitations. Okay, number 45, you got theta equal to arc secant of sine of 60 degrees. Okay, so what you need to do first is you have to figure what is, when they give you the angle, you're looking for the ratio. So 60 degrees is over here, so there's one, two, square root of three. So sine of 60 degrees is square root three over two. Okay, so sine 60 is square root three over two. And so now you can go and do the next step. So arc secant, okay, came from C can came from uh, cosine, and so it be, you're going to get 2 over square root of 3. Right, you flip it over. Now when you draw your triangle, okay, cosine is horizontal, so horizontal, so you're going to get 2 over here, 2 and over square root of 3. And again, this is impossible, because hypotenuse is, hypotenuse is square root of 3, which is 1.7. So 1.7 is less than that, so it's impossible. So this is undefined. Okay, let's go to number 47. You got theta equal to arc cosecant secant of 135 degrees. Okay, so it's all your triangle, so 135 degrees, so that's negative one, one square root of two, right? So secant, Seeking came from cosine, right? So over here, the, the cosine of 135 degrees, cosine is equal to negative one over square root of two, right? Cosine is horizontal over hypotenuse. So secant is gonna be square root of two over negative one. So theta equal to arc uh, cosecant of, so secant is 135, so again from here, So that's what's going to be that. So now you put this over here, you're going to be negative square root of 2 over 1. Okay? So now we can go and do this part over here. So cosecant came from sine. So, so again, you flip it over. So you're going to get negative 1 over square root of 2. Okay? Now you can draw the picture based on that. So negative sine is going to be right over here. So it would be negative 1 square root of 2. So it would be 1. So in this case, your theta is going to be equal to negative 45 degrees. Again, you cannot go this way. You cannot go through here, right? So do not make into 315. So if you go 315 degrees like that, then it's wrong, okay? Again, 315 is wrong. You, you, you cannot go through. To get 315, you have to go through this way, but you cannot go through quadrant 3. Okay, let's go to 49. 
you got theta equal to inverse cotangent of cotangent of negative 15 degrees now since you have cotangent and inverse cotangent it's very tempting to just go and cancel out and to answer will be negative 15 but you got to watch for the boundary there's a uh, you got to watch the the the, um, the the restrictions okay so over here So cotangent of negative 15 is right over here. So that's your negative 15. Okay. And now, so cotangent is is a uh, is cosine over sine. So I'm going to call this um, x and the y. Right. Now over here, remember the inverse cotangent is quadrant one and two. Right now, right now this is in quadrant four. Okay. So in quadrant four, you cannot. Do that so in order to get the same value okay in order to get the same value you have to you have to get in quadrant two okay so you need to go and do this and the negative will cancel out see that so in this case this is 15 right so you have to add 180 so in this case theta equal to so negative 15 plus 180 so negative 15 plus 180 this will give you 165 degrees. So it's 165 degrees. Okay. So you have to watch the boundary. Again, cotangent, they don't just cancel and make it into negative 15 because inverse cotangent is quadrant 1 and 2. Okay. So in order, to, in order to get the exact same ratio, you have to use the quadrant 2. So to get quadrant 2, to get from here to there, see that? That is half of the circle. That's why you have to plus 180. So just be careful with this. So don't just you know just go and make a cancel out. Okay. If it's positive, if it's positive, they all going to cancel out. But if it's negative, you have to watch for the quadrant. Okay? So again, if it's positive, they're just going to get all cancel out. Okay? But if it's negative, you got to check your quadrants, check for restrictions. Okay, let's go to number fifty-seven. You have tangent of cosecant inverse of negative 5 over 3 plus inverse tangent of 1 over 4. Again, when you have this kind of situation, as soon as you see the inverse function, you have to treat it as an angle. So this is equal to tangent of angle A plus angle B. Okay, so that's your angle A, that's your angle B. So what you need to do is you have to draw your triangles. So let's do the angle first so cosecant came from sine so sine is negative so you're going to get negative 3, 5 and this is your angle A right? so again cosecant came from sine so sine, again the, you have to watch the negative does not go with a 5 the negative actually goes with a 3 okay? so over here see that because 5 is, the big number is your hypotenuse and hypotenuse is always positive so you got negative 3 over 5 okay? and now the B is 1 over 4, so it's sine over cosine, okay? So it'd be 1 over 4, and this would be square root of 17. And that's the B, right? Tangent is sine over cosine. So now once, once, you, once you do that, now you can go ahead and, 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 and go and expand that. This is your sum identity. So this is equal to tangent A plus tangent B over 1 minus tangent A tangent B. So now you're going to evaluate. So tangent of A is sine over cosine. So it would be negative 3 over 4. Tangent B is sine over cosine is 1 over 4. And so you go to 1 um, minus negative 3 over 4 times 1 over 4. Okay, then after that, you want to go ahead and multiply by common denominator. Your common denominator is 16. So multiply by 16, multiply by 16, multiply by 16, multiply by 16. So this cancel out becomes 4, so you get negative 12. 
Okay, this cancel out, so it'd be plus four. Okay, over here you got sixteen, and this cancel with that, so it'd be plus three. So you're gonna end up with negative eight over nineteen, and that would let your answer. Okay, so make sure you do it step by step. It help you think through. Okay, let's go to fifty nine. You have tangent of 2, inverse secant of negative square root of 15. Okay, so again, that's your angle A. So this is equal to tangent of 2 alpha. So now you're going to, you have to draw your picture, right? Okay, you can expand first if you want to. This is equal to 2 tangent A over 1 minus uh, tangent square of A, right? Okay, so this one, again, you put over 1. So secant came from cosine, okay? So cosine is negative. It's going to be over here. So you're going to get negative 1 square root of 15. So again, negative, uh, the hypotenuse is a big number, and it's always positive. So that's how you know that negative have to go with the 1. Okay, so again, secant came from cosine, okay? So you flip it over. So basically what you have is that you have the inverse cosine of uh, negative 1 over square root of 15, right? So you come for that, you draw the picture, okay? And so from here, uh, so go ahead and draw, uh, use your Pythagorean theorem, 14, so this is square root of 14, okay? So from here, again, you substitute the numbers in here, so 2 times tangent is sine over cosine, Sine over cosine will be square root of 14 over negative 1. 1 minus square root of 14 over negative 1 squared, right? Okay, so in this case, the, the common denominator is 1, so you don't have to really multiply anything. You can just go and work it out. So you're going to get negative 2 square root of 14 over 1. Uh, negative, 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 negative uh, 14. And oh, actually, um, back up, back up. I copy the problem wrong. Okay, read, read the on fifty nine. Copy the problem wrong. It's tangent of two cotangent. So you have to kind of be careful how you copy. Sometimes when you just go back and forth, your eyes will jump. Okay, so a good idea to use your finger or just put a piece of paper. Okay, okay let's redo. So again, so that's your angle A. So this is equal to tangent of 2A. So go and draw your picture. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So cosine is, um, so cotang inverse cotangent is quotient 2. So it's going to be cosine is negative 3 over sine. So this is 5. Okay, so you can cotangent negative 3 over 4, so it's negative 3 over 4, 5. Okay, so again, you expand that, so this is equal to 2 tangent A over 1 minus tangent square of A. So this is equal to 2 times tangent, again, it's, tangent is sine over cosine, so it'll be 4 over negative 3. And I'm going to write it out twice, so easier to, to, to do, uh, to to do the, the steps. So common denominator is 9, so I'm going to multiply everything by 9. And this, are, this is only one term, so you only multiply one time. So multiply by 9. Okay, so this cancel out. So when you multiply, you're going to get negative 24. On the bottom, you're going to get 9 minus, right? Negative, 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 3 negative is minus, and this cancel out with that, it will be 16. So equal to negative 24, over negative 7, the negative cancel out, so you get 24 over 7. Okay. So again, watch how you copy the problem. So you, sometimes you might want to put a paper like this on the book so you can copy the problem correctly, so you don't end up uh, copying the wrong problem and end up wasting a lot of time.